Hi, I'm here with uh, Professor Yanis uh, Janos uh, from uh, UCL, uh, who's just uh, been speaking at our um, event on blockchain and competition law at the uh, OECD Blockchain Forum. Uh, thanks for agreeing to come say a few Thank words. Thank you for your invitation. Uh, yes, no problem, no problem. Um, it was a very interesting session, and um, one of the points that you were talking about, as far as, as far as I could make out, was that. Um, We've been in this place where we've been, we've, we've had platforms uh, with strong network effects, uh, and now we've got blockchain coming into the picture. And you were saying that network effects might be uh, slightly different in, the, in this scenario, and that this might disrupt the platforms. Was that was that fair? Um, yes, to a certain extent. So uh, what I said is that um, we have to distinguish between uh, different forms of blockchain, obviously. Yes. So uh, when you have private blockchains. Um, where obviously access is controlled, mm -hmm. uh, these look m closer, let's say, to the paradigm of, of digital platforms. Okay. Uh, uh, but the difference is that uh, with digital platforms, uh, you know, the information is kept by the platforms, by mm -hmm. the centralized, basically, authority, while in the context of the private blockchain, uh, the information is kept by the various uh, members of, yep. of the blockchain uh, and could basically could theoretically leave and take the information uh, with them. Right? Sure. Okay. So you have, uh, even in the context of, of private blockchains, you have less uh, risks with regards to network effects than what you have in the context of, of digital platforms. And obviously that is even uh, more ex intensive to a certain extent uh, with uh, public blockchains where mm -hmm. basically everyone can have actually have access to that blockchain. So sometimes access is conditioned. Mm -hmm. uh, so for instance, you can uh, put an application, put an app Sorry, on uh, on Ethereum, in case you buy some Ether, so that's yeah. kind of. But everyone theoretically has access to that, mm -hmm. uh, and at the same time, we still have the same benefits in terms of uh, you know the uh, data is actually kept by uh, the virus parties. Uh, there is uh, replicability. There's a possibility for them in case they don't agree with the governance uh, of the particular blockchain sure. to leave and to create a fork yeah. uh, blockchain, taking basically uh, uh, the history of yeah. the blockchain with them. Uh, things that uh, were not possible with a uh, digital platform. So yeah. from that perspective, I think this is definitely uh, some uh, positive news for, for competition. Though. Sure, sure. Okay. Um, and then there was a bit of a discussion in the panel about whether kind of the existing frameworks and the existing tools were sufficient in, the, in this potentially new world. Um, what was your take uh, on that? I, I think in my, this is something that is not only related mm. to blockchain. I even think that with digital platforms, mm. um, the existing tools could be used, yeah. but maybe we should also think of uh, additional tools uh, and methodologies because I think there is a problem in the way we conceive competitive interactions mm. in the digital economy uh, using the old methods. And there's also a problem with regards to our focus on relevant markets as okay. being basically the only area in which the only area in which we try to assess yeah. these competitive interactions. And what actually I was showing uh, is that we are slowly moving uh, from you know a market uh, to uh, platforms and obviously to ecosystems mm. uh, where uh, competition is not only you know taking place in order to uh, win you know winners take takes most type mm. of, of game or a, a competition for the market uh, but actually there is a uh, sort of a complex uh, competitive interaction where you have competition and cooperation mm. because you are trying to develop particular firms are trying to develop a, an ecosystem and try to place themselves in a strategic position within that ecosystem mm. so as to be able to uh, get as much as they can in terms of the uh, surplus value that is generated by that ecosystem and its, and its value chain mm. so I, I do think from that perspective we really want to analyze competitive interactions taking place in, in this world we we need of course we don't have to abandon the concept of relevant markets very important and useful mm. but we also need to add uh, these um, you know other concepts like ecosystem like value chain and possibly mm. develop uh, also specific metrics uh, for um, not only market power in the context of a market but mm -hmm. also power in the context of shaping a uh, the architecture of an ecosystem so and right? i think this point, is something yeah. that I think we're missing uh, from uh, from the competition laws that we have. Okay, brilliant. Thank you very much. All right, thank you.